Hello and welcome to the Heart Hook Home Video Crochet Podcast. My name is Ashley. I am your host and the crochet pattern blogger and designer behind hearthookhome.com. So here we are today. It is a Saturday actually, so we are one day late on our typical podcast schedule and something came up yesterday and I just could not get it up. So here we are, we're a little bit late, but we're here and it's gonna be great. So I am modeling my Denzel sweater. This is the sweater that I had made for, um, designed for men. This is my men's sweater that I think I put out in, I think it was in September. I did go ahead and make a small for myself. Look at the stitches on that, isn't that gorgeous? I love the way that looks, it's beautiful. Um, but this is the size small. I did make it shorter than the original men's sweater because I, I wanted it to showcase how it could be unisex as well. So if you have already made a Denzel or purchased that pattern for um, a man in your life, maybe you should make one for yourself because it's super cute. And so I wanted to demonstrate that today in today's podcast. And I was also going to take my 16 year old who will be 16 next week, which is absolutely mind boggling to me. Um, he's the one that originally modeled this Denzel sweater for me in the park. I was gonna take him back out there this weekend, hopefully today, I don't know if it's gonna happen, but take him out to the park and have him wear his and me wear mine and be all cutesy together. Um, and he can tower over me like he does and show how it can be a woman's sweater or a men's sweater. So I really do love the stitches on this one. I love the way that it works up. It feels really good on, like I said, I did make it shorter. Um, it should be about down to here, I think, if it, if it was a, the, as the pattern is written for the men's version. But literally, it's the same exact pattern. The sleeves are exactly the same. Everything's the same. I just did not add as much length to it because I thought, you know, it'd be kind of cute if it was not cropped, but just shorter, right? So not as oversized um, as if you were to be wearing the men's sweater, right? Anyway, so we've got a few fun things coming up. As I said, Thanksgiving is next week. If you are also in the United States, um, that is next Thursday, which is probably my favorite holiday of the year because I feel like there's not very many expectations except for being you know good turkey and good mashed potatoes um but it's it's just one of my favorite holidays because we just get together there's no worrying about wrapping presents or making sure that you didn't forget someone or anything like that there's no expectations there's no nothing it's just people getting together enjoying each other eating good food watching some football and just chilling with your family you know um so i've got family coming in town this week and then um i've obviously got I don't know if you if you've followed me for a while you may know that I have family all across the United States so this next six weeks or so is going to be pretty crazy with um people coming in and out of town visiting doing all kinds of things so if the podcast gets a little wonky in the next six weeks or so through the end of the year that is why so if it's not up on a Friday like normal just come back the next day hopefully and it will be up I will try to do my best to keep you posted um if there is any delays and things like that so a few things as Thanksgiving is next week. I have been working on a lot of accessory patterns. I have a, a men's set, a new men's set. There's a fuzzy in the, <laughs> in the air. I have a new women's set, um, which includes uh, wrist warmers, fingerless gloves, right? Um, it's got an infinity scarf, it's got an ear warmer, and then it's got a full slouchy beanie. And then it also has um, a little coffee cup koozie that you can put around your Starbucks or whatever to be all matchy matchy. Um, so there's that. And then I have the men's sweater or the men's um, set coming out, which is a, a scarf and a beanie, which is absolutely fabulous. It's got these great man colors. So I'm going to have my son model that today or tomorrow whenever we go to the park as well. And then there's a waffle scarf that I have been talking about forever. I did finish the ear warmer that matches that. And then there's one other thing. What was it? Oh, it's an ear warmer that I made. Oh, I wonder where I put that. Oh, there it is. Let me show you. It's gorgeous. Okay, here it is. This is using Huga yarn, which is that nice, um, fuzzy yarn that's from Red Heart. Absolutely love this and the way that this turned up. So I have these four different accessory patterns ready to publish. I, all I need to do is get the blog post ready and, and get those ready to publish. So what I'm thinking is since it's Thanksgiving, we're going to do a Thanksgiving bash. We're going to put all four of these patterns out. I'm going to publish one on Thursday, one on Friday, one on Saturday, and one on Sunday. And I'm going to send these free patterns out via email. So if you are on the email newsletter, there is a link to sign up below or on any page on heartcom.com. You can find the email um, newsletter sign up. 
form, but I'm going to send these out one on Thursday, one on Friday, one on Saturday, one on Sunday. So it's going to be four days of Thanksgiving and it's going to be pretty awesome. So don't forget to check your email on those days and definitely um, you, you'll want these because they're cute. And these would be excellent small, any of these patterns that I'm about to publish this week would be excellent small quick makes that you can use for Christmas gifts next month, right? So let me show you this one just because it is so freaking cute. What I love about this one in particular, this is using that Huga yarn, right? Isn't that pretty? I just love it. I love how fuzzy it is. What I love about this even more than anything else. You all know that I love to go on my walks in the morning. I like to go to the park and I usually do four and a half miles or so. Sometimes I go up to six, but that's only if I'm feeling particularly feisty. You know what I mean? Like if I get halfway through and I'm like, I'm gonna really kill it today, I might do another lap or two. Um, but anyway, it is frigidly cold here in Kansas right now. I don't know if you all have ever been to Kansas before. If you haven't, there's not a lot, right? It's a lot of flat prairie land and there's not a lot of wind breakage, right? Not a lot of trees, not a lot of buildings, everything you can see for miles, literally. And so it's, it, when it is windy here, it is frigidly cold. And yesterday, I think the high was 29 degrees or something. So I haven't walked in a few days. But part of the reason I wanted to create this crochet pattern is because I did it using a Tunisian crochet in the round, which I have a complete video tutorial. Basically, you could take that video tutorial which I'll link, um, you could take that video tutorial, just change the number of chains to start, because this is made in a tube, right? And so it's about 18, 19 inches long in a tube, and then we squish it flat, which means that it's double thick. So I don't know about you, but my ears, especially when it's cold and windy, my ears, I even, even as, as high as maybe 45 or 50 degrees, I have to wear something over my ears because they just get so cold like inside all the way down and my jaw starts aching and my neck starts hurting and it's just awful so I have to have something covering up and with this double thickness in this super thick chunky yarn this is the warmest head warmer ever and I absolutely love it this twisted style is not new um and it's also extremely easy to do you just we're going to make a tube sew it or lay it flat put the two ends together, sew it up, and you're done. So this one would not take long at all, especially if you have already worked Tunisian crochet in the round. So this is one of my new favorites. I did make a worsted weight version of this using a stretcher yarn that has been discontinued. It's a wool blend, I think, from um, Australia. And I did make um, a worsted weight version with that yarn and it's just not as nice. I mean, it's nice, but but this one is definitely my favorite just because of how bulky and how warm it is in general, especially going into December, January, February, those really frigidly cold months. So there is that. So definitely make sure that you are on the email newsletter list because in the next week, you're gonna be getting four free patterns and I will make those free PDF patterns as well. I'm not just gonna send you the link in, um, to the blog post. I'm gonna actually put the PDF on there, but it's only gonna be available for that day. So you gotta make sure you get on there and get it, okay? So another thing that I have been working on, um, I've been looking at, I've had this Brava Bulky, right? Brava Bulky is an excellent bulky weight yarn that I absolutely love. I love Brava. I love Brava Sport, which is what I use to make my gray Lori poncho. I love Brava Worsted, which is what I use to make my green or the avocado colorway of the Lori poncho. And then this is Brava Bulky. So Brava yarn comes from Knit Picks or We Crochet, their sister companies. So they have a sport weight, a worsted weight, and a bulky weight. And I have been wanting to make a blanket, right? So I'm trying to up my blanket game, right? Because I feel like, you know, I, I make a lot of garments and I make a lot of accessories, but I don't really have a whole ton of blanket patterns. One of my most popular ones is this, the Sangria Sorbet, which is absolutely stunning. I love this blanket. And that is a free pattern on the blog as well. But I wanted to make a blanket pattern using a bulky weight yarn because it works up faster. It's super warm. So I'm ending up <laughs> I'm actually going to have two new bulky weight patterns because there's one. I had this amazing, um, my friend Sarah sent me an amazing picture of this blanket that you can use at 
sporting events, outdoor sporting events that is super, super warm. And we can make that like we can totally crochet one of those. So we have ordered enough yarn to do it in Kansas City Chiefs colors because we're in Kansas and the Chiefs are awesome. Even if you're not in Kansas, <laughs> you can use whatever colors you want. You can even do it in a solid color um, as well, but absolutely amazing. So we're going to have that one coming out. And then this one is the one that I'm currently working out because of that Tunisian headband that I had that I just showed you this, um, this, project that is on my couch right here. It is a Tunisian crochet blanket and it's a brand new stitch that I have never done a tutorial on. So I will be doing a tutorial for this um, when it is, when this blanket is finished. But this is a Tunisian version of the basket weave stitch. So isn't that absolutely gorgeous? I love it. Love it, love it. I love the way that these line up. So we've got our Tunisian knits and then our pearls and then our knits and we just offset them. And because of this, when you use traditional crochet and you do the basket weave stitch, it tends to be very number one, a yarn eater, because you're doing post stitches, you're going around the post from the previous row. Um, and then number two, um, it tends to be really thick and really dense. So with this, since this is a cross kind of between knitting and crocheting, it is not as bulky, it's not as thick of, of a fabric, but it turns out, see the backside, it turns out um, much easier to crochet. I really do think that this is a much easier version of the basket weave stitch. So I will be doing a video tutorial on this. Let me show you the colors that I'm using though because it's pretty fabulous. This is about 60 inches wide, right? And I plan on making it about at least 60 inches tall. I don't want it to be a square. I really want it to be closer to 72 maybe inches tall and I might have to get more yarn. But that is the beautiful thing about this. I wanted to do the basket weave, but that in traditional crochet, it's such a yarn eater that I would not have been able to make it quite as large. So I'll, I'll um, have that tutorial up as soon as possible, but check out these colors that I'm using because they're great together. So this is the avocado colorway. This is the one that I made um, the Lori poncho with when I used the worsted weight. So they, that's another nice thing that I really love about it is that if there is a yarn color that you just love in Brava Sport, then they're, they're probably gonna have it in Brava Bulky or Brava Worsted. Um, so it's, it's nice that you can um, get that same color, you know what I mean, and use it in a different project. So the colors that I'm using, I'm using white, obviously, and then this avocado, this beautiful bright green. This is silver, I'm almost positive, and then this one is the cobblestone heather. So I'm never going to have those two grays right next to each other because I don't like the, I don't, I don't, I don't know, I don't like the way that they, they go next to each other, but if we always separate it with the green or the white, that's going to be a nice contrast of colors, really good depth, and it's going to be beautiful. So this is one that I am working on. I will get that um, pattern uh, or the tutorial posted as soon as possible. What I'm thinking is that for the rest of this year, my goal is to clean up all of these small projects that I have. So like all of these accessory patterns that I'm going to publish next week. And then we're going to be finishing up the car series in the second Friday of December. So I have one more car pattern that I am working on. I have yarn that is hopefully going to be delivered today so that I can get started on that. So yeah, for the rest of this year, I'm really thinking just cleaning up small things, getting everything knocked off of my to-do list so that we can hit 2023 nice and hard with all of the tutorials and things like that. I have so many video tutorials that I am planning for next year that I am, I'm, I can't wait. Another thing, uh, the Lori Poncho. Everyone is loving the Lori Poncho and that has been so wildly popular and I absolutely love it. Thank you so much for sharing and for loving it and making it and then sharing your photos of it. I'm, I'm, I love seeing them pop up. I've only seen a few of them that have been completed since the pattern uh, was published. Um, I've had three testers share pictures in the group, but I love seeing the new ones pop in. And I've had a lot of people asking for child sizes of the Lori poncho. So what I've decided is I'm going, since it's a poncho and it's more of like a size range instead of like a, you know, six, eight, 10, 12, 12, 14, whatever, instead of having so many sizes, I have a toddler that I've already worked up 
you know, the pattern, I haven't worked it up yet. But I've done the pattern for the toddler, I've done a child size, and then I've done a teen. So I will have all of the measurements, um, wrist to wrist and from hem or shoulder to hem for all of those sizes. And you just pick which one you think would work best for your little one. Honestly, if you're in between sizes, I would always go up to the next size because especially for a child, they're going to grow. And I would rather them be able to grow into it than have to squeeze into the smaller one and not be able to wear it for very long. Um, so this is something that I'm super excited about. So I'm, I do plan on doing a video tutorial for the Lori Poncho. And when I do that, I will make the smallest size, my toddler size. Um, one of my little models for that, um, I've got a, a, a select very small group of friends that have small children, right? And most of them are friends with each other. But this one girl um, that's, that I've got lined up to model this toddler sizes of the Lori Poncho, she's absolutely precious. She's uh, She also modeled my newborn on point poncho when she was a couple weeks old. She came over and put that on and took pictures of it. And oh my gosh, she's absolutely precious. And she's, she's just adorable. She's so sassy. So I'm hoping that these poncho pictures go over really well. And I can't decide I've got this peach color. Actually, let me show you. So I went to the store and I picked out this peach yarn because I thought that would be a great color um, for the poncho. But then I'm thinking maybe I should just use this gray because this gray, this Bravo 500 right here, this is a, this is also the Bravo yarn, right? But this is the worsted weight version. And in the worsted weight, they do have these humongous skeins. So this is 1,090 yards. And I don't know if they're still on sale, but the other day I shared a link on my Facebook page and in the Heart Hook Home Crochet Community group on Facebook, that these were on sale for a little bit over $5 which is absolutely insane. The cheapest I've ever seen these is six. And so I went in and I bought like 80 some dollars worth of yarn because they're having amazing yarn sales and I can't not. But one of these, and I haven't checked the yardage yet. I do have testers working up each size of these child size Lori ponchos. My child size tester already finished. Um, she hasn't done the hood yet. So I, I'm thinking that the yardage will be enough to make the toddler size or the child size, probably not the teen size, with one of these Bravo 500 skeins. So if you're getting this for five bucks or six bucks, that's a heck of a deal to make an entire poncho, right, for your child. Or make th get three of these and you can make a full-blown blanket. Like, absolutely amazing. 15 bucks, 20 bucks tops to make a full full size crochet blanket. So if this sale is still going on, definitely check that out. I'll check it when I before I post this video and I'll put a link in the description um, to show you the Bravo 500. Because even if it's not on sale at the time that you're watching this video, they go on sale a lot and that is a heck of a deal. I absolutely love this yarn works out great, works for so many different things. Um, and then some of their Brava Sport colors were only a dollar a skein and some of their Brava Worsted was on sale as well. They had some Shine Sport, which is what I used for the Rose Cardi, um, that long rainbow Cardi. They have some of that for a dollar as well. I did notice that they put a limit of five on them <laughs> only because I tried to buy like 20. Um, and they said, no, sorry, you can only do five at a time of each color. Um, so I did, I ordered five of those and five of those and five of those, but for $5 for five skeins, I'm sorry, I can't not, you know, that's just a no brainer for me. So anyway, lots of really exciting things happening. Definitely make sure that you are on an email newsletter list so that this week when I send out those four free patterns that you will be able to find those easily on the blog. I'm just going to upload them straight to the blog. A lot of times, the PDF I mean, a lot of times when I do free patterns like that, I like to give a coupon code that is valid on the blog shop only. So if you go to hearthookhome.com and click on the shop button, I've got all of my crochet patterns there available and it's a little bit cheaper than Etsy because Etsy's fees are absolutely ridiculous just a tidbit um if you if you normally shop on etsy save a buck and go to the blog shop and you can get it there for cheaper right so i don't have to pay the fees so i'm not making you pay the extra money right um but usually when i do a free pdf like that i like to send you to the blog and say here's this this and this use this coupon code on the blog shop to get the pdf for free so you actually have to complete an order and then that email is sent to you containing the download for the PDF and everything else. For this one though, since it's Thanksgiving and since I am going to be spending time with my people, I'm not going to be on the computer as much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and schedule these blog posts to be ready on those specific days and then there's just going to be a big pink button in there that says click here for the PDF and you'll just have to click on that 
save it, and that's it. There's going to be no coupon code or anything because I'm going to be spending time with my family and my people too. So make it as quick and easy as possible, but you'll definitely want to do that. I also have a new Frankie cowl that was just published the other day. I think I did that on Thursday. Absolutely mind-blowing. Everyone has loved that pattern. I don't know why, but I just didn't expect that to be um, as crazy popular as it has been, which is awesome. Um, I've already got people making that. I'm going to make my own a new. I'm going to make a, my own new one um, with just solid black because, I, or maybe a dark gray because I feel like that would just go with everything, and I'm really excited about that. So I will be working on that myself. But I've already started a child size version because I've had a lot of people asking for a child size of that. So that pattern. It is a triangle shawl, right? So it's a triangle shawl with a cowl on the top of it. So what I've done is I've taken the May's shawl, which May was my um, really good friend. She was an elderly woman. Um, at the time that I knew her, she was 95 um, and she lived to be, I wanna say 102 or 103. But when I was, um, a teenager or early 20s, I worked in the Alzheimer's unit at a nursing home here in Wichita. And she was a dream. I mean, she was just absolutely amazing. She always had her pearls on. She always had her red lipstick on. She always had her hair done. And she was just the sweetest lady. Um, and I always liked to sit next to her when we were doing activities or, or cooking. Like I, a lot of times as um, I worked in the activities department of the, of the Alzheimer's unit and we would make cookies together or whatever. She was just so amazing. So I named this blanket pattern after her and then I made a shawl, a triangle shawl version of that as well. So what I did is I took the triangle version portion of that pattern, connect it in the back, and then we make a cowl on top of that, right? So the cowl is tall enough that you can pull it over your head. I think on this next one that I make for myself, this this black one or whatever solid color I choose, I think I'm going to put, um, use my lucid fork and make a drawstring so that I can put it around the top of the cowl so that if I do put it up, I can pull that drawstring and have it more like a actual closed hood um, for super, super chilly days. But yeah, I think that's, that's going to be amazing. I've already gotten my child sizes started of that. So be on the lookout for that. I might maybe, hmm, I might be able to get that included in that accessories um, Thanksgiving bundle thing. I'm, I'm working on these group of patterns. So fingers crossed, if I can get it done on time, I might do that. Uh, we'll just have to see. So yeah, well, I'm going to round up my older son, see if I can get him to model his Denzel with me. Isn't this fabulous? I just love it. It's so pretty. I love it very much. And so yeah, I'm gonna go to the park, get some pictures, share those with you on the Facebook page and probably in email, etc. So y'all have a lovely weekend and I will see you in two weeks for the next episode of the Heart Hook Home Video Portrait Podcast. Thanks for watching.